Good morning, and it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Brother Eli, if you don't mind collecting the Sunday school off, please. Uh, by way of announcement, we are redoing the church directory, so there are papers back there on the office still. Grab one, fill it out, and hand it back to Sister Beth or myself when you're finished with it. Or you can put it in our mailbox. That works too. So we've been discussing what major topic in Sunday school. Being a Pentecostal powerhouse. And what are we likening it to? We are likening to the person who goes to the gym five days a week, six days a week, seven days a week, and is constantly working out. And we consider them to be a Pentecostal. A Pentecostal. You can consider them to be a powerhouse because they're constantly working on their muscles and everything else. Sister Beth, where's your phone at? If I may use that, please, because mine's charging and I don't have that. Mm -hmm. But they go to the gym every day, they're work practically, they're working out, they're getting fit, and they get lean and buff and tough and muscles on muscles, and we consider that to be a powerhouse. Well, we can liken that to the spiritual and how we ought to become Pentecostal powerhouses in the spirit. How do we do that? By praying every day, reading our Bible every day, building our relationship with God on a daily basis. And by doing so, we can become a Pentecostal powerhouse. We looked at the armor and we've been looking at the gifts of the spirit. And the gifts of the spirit, in order to have the gifts of the spirit, you must have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And what is the sign of the baptism of the Holy Ghost? The person speaking in other tongues. Now, are these tongues a known language to that individual? No, it is something completely unknown to them. Is it always just a heavenly tongue? No, it can be an earthly language, it can be a heavenly language, but it's a language that is unknown to the individual nonetheless. <laughs> and what is the purpose of the baptism of the Holy Ghost? It is to empower believers to be witnesses to the performing of the people's calling in their lives that God has called them to, to edify the church, and to help us pray for things that we have not known, and the list can go on and on and on. But when we look at the baptism of the Holy Ghost, Who's it for? It is for the believers. And it just, is it just for some of the believers? It is for everyone who has received Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Thank you. Now, in order to have the gifts of the Spirit working in our lives, or to have any of the gifts of the Spirit, first we have to have the baptism. Can a person lay hands on somebody and pray for them and see them miraculously healed without having any of the gifts of the Spirit? Absolutely. And why is that, brother? Absolutely. And long story short, because it's according to the Word of God, there are some things that might seem like the gifts of the Spirit or might correlate with the gifts of the Spirit that line up with the believer because simply that we have obeyed the Word of God. And there are sinners that if they do things according to the Word of God, that they can see miracles happen. What do I mean by that? I'm not saying lay hands on the sick, but there have been people who are not saying cast out demons. And why is that? Simply because they use the Word of God. The devil is still subject to the Word of God. Now if you try and track down some of these people that cast out demons that weren't saved at all, you'll find that it wasn't long after that that maybe they committed suicide or they ended up dead somehow. Why? Because that demon left that person and started tormenting the person that cast down. But is it possible for an unsaved person to cast out a demon? Absolutely. But if, like I said, if you go back and look at some of the other Catholic encounters where the priest cast out demons, there are some that you'll find didn't live long after that. And the reason being it probably more likely is the demons start focusing on them. So 
You have that aspect of it. However, God wants every believer to be baptized with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It is for absolutely everyone that believes. But not all the gifts of the Spirit <coughs> are for every believer that receives the baptism of the Holy Ghost. How do we know that? Is there a scripture to back that up? It's one of the big bold ones from last week. If you have last week's papers on the gifts of the Spirit. If you're looking at, it'd be page 41. The header's wrong, I messed up. When I was switching notes over, I still have batches of the Holy Ghost as part of the lesson. Page 41. Chapter 14. 
I think it's chapter 14. Paul's talking about the gift of tongues and interpretation. And who does Paul tell that? What, what does Paul tell them about tongues? If everybody's speaking in tongues, what's happening? They're going to think they're mad. If we get down to it, the gift of tongues, if the person just speaks in tongues and there's no interpretation, who's being edified then? Right, brother. The person speaking in tongues. So the gifts of the Spirit can be for the individual, but the reason for the interpretation, what's the reason for the interpretation of the tongue? Or what's the reason for prophecy? Because interpretation and prophecy kind of are on the same level in this passage. Okay. What's that? Okay. Well, they go together, but I, well, I mean, they, they go together, but who are tongues and who is interpretation and prophecy edifying? Edify? Who are they for? If tongues is for the individual, Exactly, brother. Exactly. So it's for the whole edification of the whole. So when we look at gifts of the Spirit, they can be for the individual, but they're meant for the whole body. So, a question. Yes. So the speaking in tongues, uh, what what do you pray for when, I mean, does God just pick his people to fill the Holy Spirit? Or you pray, I mean, I pray to fill with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Does he just pick that, or you pray for it, or you pray for wisdom, or you pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit? You're referring or, to or has God just picked you because you have more of a relationship? Is, is, is Let me back up for a second. I don't what, mean that's wrong. You know, the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Pardon? Are you asking for the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Is that what we're talking about No, no I'm asking you. Okay, if the guy's out of me speaking in tongues, why not am I speaking in tongues? Are you talking about the gift of tongues? Is that where you're at? You're telling me the gift of tongues is up there when you're when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Is that correct or is that wrong? No, no. There's when you are baptized with the Holy Ghost, it is evidence or it is an outward showing that you've received it because you're speaking in other tongues. That say, tongues, say that again. If you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the outward sign is that you have received it because you are speaking in other tongues. It's an unknown tongue to you. However, there is a difference between the tongues that you speak when you receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and that you use in your everyday prayer life or even worship life versus the gift of tongues when we get into the gifts of the Spirit. They're two entirely different things. Because the tongues that you receive at, with the baptism is for you. Well, I've been baptized five times. And I know it's for the tongue. That's water baptism. That's something different. Yeah, okay. Water baptism is just an outward sign that we are putting all away our life of sin. And we are living a life now in Christ. And we're going to do our best to follow the Bible to our whole ability. Turn from sin. It, that is just an outward sign. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is entirely different from that. They're two different things. Water baptism is just an outward sign. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is a gift for every believer. It's just a matter of receiving it. So if you get baptized, you got your future. So if I get baptized, and you get baptized, let me put it. I don't understand what you're saying there about you get baptized and receive in the Holy Ghost, and you get baptized and just. Get Let baptized. me try it this way. Let me try it this well, way. Why ain't all baptism when you're water baptized? Why isn't it all the same? Because they're two different things. Let me put it this way. Maybe this will unmark you the water. There's such a thing as water baptism, which is just an outward sign. We get dunked in water. We're turning off the old life. We come up. We're gonna live completely for. I, at that point, we should be living for Christ, but it's just an outward sign. Okay? You with me on that one? Right. Just outward sign. Correct. Bible commands us to do it, we do it, but it's just an outward sign. However, there's another experience where the Holy Ghost comes upon us, fills us with himself, 
and the outward sign of that is speaking in other tongues. We call it the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but it's an entirely different situation. It's not baptized like being baptized underwater. It's something spiritual. It's something completely different. Uh, okay. Does that make I sense? I got you saying, yeah, so baptized in the Holy Spirit and then being submerged with, with the water. We call it the baptism of the Holy Ghost because he's coming upon us, maybe yeah. flooding over us, hovering on us, but it's entirely different than water baptism. What is just wording? What 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 causes God to fill you with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit? First, you have to be saved. You got to be saved, and you have to be seeking. Repent. And we you got to be back, You got to be water baptized or not? Depends. Um, it's not a requirement, but if you are pushing off water baptism, it's something that God commands us to do it, and you're pushing it off. You're not you're not there's no reason for him to fill you because you're not being submissive to the will of God. This is what he commands you to do. Same way with the gifts of the Spirit. When it comes to us being used in the gifts of the Spirit, we need to be completely submitted to God. That's, 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 that's to me. And surrender. But some people, what I've been watching on TV, some people say you got a relationship. I mean, you have to hear where you, 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 I'm going to say it. <clears throat> some people believe it. In religion, they go to church, but then they don't live the will of God. In a relationship with God, is totally different. You worship Him, you study His Word, and you you pray, and you just don't go to church like years ago. Meanwhile, you go to church and go to bars and go doing the, the sinful life. And we're past that. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is for those that are believers. The person who's not saved is not going to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. This is only for the believer. If a person is living in sin... So you're saying if I, if I don't speak in tongues, I'm not saved. Is that what you're trying to tell me? No, I'm not saying that at all. Uh -huh. Baptism of the Holy Ghost. If you don't speak in tongues, you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Okay. That's the sign. So it's just it's what nothing it, to do okay. that you're not saved if you don't speak in tongues. There if you don't speak in... That's something entirely different. Okay. I think I understand. Okay? So okay. as we're going forward... Uh, we're referring to spiritual gifts. There are three classes of gifts. The revelation gifts, which are the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discernment of spirits. There are the power gifts, which are the gifts of faith, gifts of healing, working miracles. And then you have the inspiration gifts, which <coughs> we all are a lot more familiar with. Tongues, interpretation, and prophecy. Because we've seen them working in our midst more than we do the others. Okay, now we've talked about, let's come down here to page 42, um, point four. I'm just going to quick rehash point quick uh, three. The purpose of the gifts are the same reason that God gave the gifts to the church, probably for the perfecting of the saints, working of the ministry, edifying the body. Persuasion of the unbeliever, validation of the gospel message, demonstration of the power of God, guide and direct the believer, praise, um, point praise to God, and the comforting of the saints. Now, when we get down to the gifts of the Spirit, if someone wants to read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 31. 1 Corinthians 12 and 31. So we are told to do what? Covet earnestly the best gifts. So this kind of goes back hand in hand. Not every believer is going to be used in every gift of the Spirit. However, the Holy Ghost has given to everyone severally as he will. And the Bible tells us to covet the best gifts. Is it possible to have one of the gifts of the Spirit in your life and not know it? And when I say that, I'm not talking about being working and being used, but is it possible that God's given you a gift and you don't know how to use it? So the Bible tells us to covet the best gifts. Seek for the best gifts. Now I thought this was interesting as I came across this. Uh, some people actually believe that if we go back to the original text, Paul here is actually rebuking the church at Corinth when he said to covet the best gifts. Uh, and the reason 
for this is because if you get down into chapter 13, what's Paul doing? If we go to chapter 13 and verse 1, 1 Corinthians 13 and 1. What's Paul talking? Or writing, I should say. <laughs> and let me back up. Let's, I'll go ahead and read it. We'll back up to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and read verse 31. And remember what I said earlier, the chapters being divided are not as far as the verses, and that's why they seem to go hand in hand sometimes into the next one or bleed through. And we can go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and 31. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, and have not charity, and I have become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal, and we'll read verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understanding, all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. So if we take out the chapters and the verses and mesh this all together, as if one person is talking to you, some people believe that covet earnestly the best gifts was a rebuke by Paul because what the people in the church at Perth were doing was they were contending with each other, they were competing. Well, Brother Peter has the gift of discernment of spirits, so now I have to get the gifts of the discernment of spirit, and I know he doesn't have the gift of prophecy, so now I need to get that too. They're contending with one another. They're fighting over the gifts. And when we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, as much as we love to use that in weddings and uh, Valentine's Day and talk about love, yada, 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 it appears that Paul's making a point here. We've talked about spiritual things. We've talked about the gifts of the Spirit. But let me make a point here. If I have all the gifts of the Spirit in my life and I don't love my brother, you know, they mean nothing. And then if we get into 1 Corinthians chapter 14, what's Paul doing? He starts describing the gifts of the Spirit, uh, more specifically tongues and interpretation in more detail and giving them instruction. So when we look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, as much as we use it for love, it seems that more Paul's using it to make a point concerning the gifts of the Spirit. You know, you can have all the gifts of the Spirit, but if you don't love, they're of no avail. I'm just a sounding brass or tinkling cymbal. So when we look at this, it shows a whole new light in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 because now we see that Paul's making a point. Yes, he's talking about love. He's talking about the importance of love. And he's describing it. But he's also making a point because the church in Corinth, they had a lot of issues going on. And he was showing them, if we are going to use the gifts of the Spirit, we need to use them out of love and not out of contention or competition with one another. That's not what the gifts of the Spirit are for. They're for the edifying of the body of God. They're for the furthering of the kingdom. They're for the work of the ministry. They're not for you just to sit back and say, hey, I have this now. Because when we look at the gifts of the Spirit, what's one of the largest thing? What's one of the largest things that can lead to the downfall of the individual who's being used in the gifts of the Spirit? What's the largest thing? I don't know the best way to describe it. Oh. Pride. Pride will lead to the downfall of the individual who uses the gifts of the Spirit. That's the purpose that you're using it for. And on deep their downfall, because why do we do things in love? What is the purpose of living? What is the reason? God has given us many gifts. Some people might be smarter than some in the area of mechanics. Some might be better in this area. Some might be more talented in that area. But if we go back to... Um, even the gifts of the Spirit or the people in the church when we're talking about offices and stuff like that. Paul said not everyone can be the head. Not everybody can be the eyeball. Not everybody can be the foot. But rather everyone has their purpose to work together. The individual who is prideful will find themselves a bit. <coughs> they will find them at themselves at the lowest point because when it comes to the gifts of the Spirit, they're not for contention. Brother Peter, man, if you have the gift of the discernment of Spirit, good for you. But I need to see what gifts God has for me in my life. If no one else is being used in the discernment of spirits, God use me. Give me that gift too. 
If no one else that has this gift and I can see an operation, God, give me that gift too. But first, I need to make sure I'm working on the gifts that God has for me. And when we look at these gifts, they're not for us. Why should we, we be why should we be living our everyday life? What should we be living our everyday life for? God. God. Everything in our life ought to be for the kingdom of God. It should be for the glory of God. That is why we do things. We don't come to this building because it's a church building. We come to the building because that's the house of God. Why do we come to church? Because God commands us to come to his house. <coughs> why do we help out our brother in the, time, in the time of need? If we see somebody that really needs help, why might we help them out of that situation? Hopefully it's not because of us. But the love of God. Because of the love of God. That's what it's all about. What makes us different than um, maybe even the, quote, best sinner in the world? It ought to be because we love God. That is the reason we're doing it. And maybe some people can help somebody out a whole lot better than we can. Whether it be financially, whether they have more skills to help around that area. But are we doing what we can for the glory of God? And when we come down to the gifts of the Spirit, that's what it's for. It's not for us, it's for Him. <clears throat> so when we get to the gifts of the Spirit, that's what Paul was talking about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 31. About covet earnestly the best gift. Don't contend over the gifts, but seek them. Because if we use them for our own benefit, and we use them because we want to do it this way, or if we're contending with somebody else, if we use them to make us look better, they're of no avail. We do nothing for the kingdom of God. We do absolutely nothing. There have been times I've seen, heard of people, there was a guy who went around healing people, I think it was, he was a missionary. And there was one disease that he healed over and over and over again. So people miraculously healed from But there was a point in his life where he stood up and said, I have reached the pinnacle of my ministry. And you know, at some point, it wasn't long after that he died of that very disease that he healed so many people from. So what are you saying there? He didn't give Jesus the credit for that. He did. I mean, Jesus, you give Jesus the credit. Jesus gives you the power to heal you got to give the, that's Jesus doing it through you. That is the power of the Holy Ghost. That is God what, working through us. What I get out of it. That I mean, is exactly whatever, what it is. I mean, it's not just you, and you should humble yourself and not think you might have an ego, is, is what I believe. And that will lead to our downfall. But Correct. for the reason we don't, we seek for the gift of the Spirit, the reason we seek for the baptism of the Holy Ghost is not for us, it's for everybody else. The gifts of the Spirit are for the edification of the body of the church. But it's also for the unbeliever. Well, if we go back to the uh, book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, um, Brother Eli said it earlier, tongues is for the unbeliever. Prophecy interpretation is for the believer. If we get down into our own spiritual life, when we pray in tongues, that's for us. We're edifying ourselves. But it's not to boast us up. It's not to... Uh, Put us on a high pedestal, brother. You're like, if I'm praying in tongues, I'm praying for God to work something through me. I'm praying for a situation. When I, when I pray, I like to get far, far away from everybody. I really do. And I like to let loose. Because honestly, nobody needs to know what I'm praying about. If I want to know what you to know what I'm praying about, I will tell you. I think it does you do that when you're a woman close the door. It does. And why? I get out of it. Because I mean, I don't believe you should pray. And, I mean, you pray in front of people in the congregation. But I mean, when you have a relationship with God, you win a room and you, you cry out to him. And when we do that, we are edifying ourselves. We are working on ourselves. But when we shut ourselves away, we are shutting pride away because we are seeking that place of prayer with God. And he is pleased with us because he is working. We are allowing him to work. And it is also a point of submission and surrender. If we're going to be used in the gifts of the Spirit, 
It's going to be when we are in a place of submission and surrender. Because if we do not surrender completely to the will of God, well, then we might think it's God, but maybe it's not God. The devil has crept into the church so too many ways through the gifts of the Spirit, too many times through the gifts of the Spirit, because somebody wasn't completely sold out to God, and they listened to the wrong voice. I remember a minister telling me that they were in a church service and heard whether it was prophecy or interpretation go forth, and they were sitting there and thinking go and praying, going, God, this sounds like you, but this is not you. What is it? People who are led away and are confused by the wrong voice because while at one time they might have been used of God, well, but they lost that point of surrender to God well, and when submission. Wrong, when you're saying about the wrong voice comes into your brain, to me, that's that's like you got a choice, the right choice to do it, the right choice to the wrong choice. Everybody and I has would a say ninety percent of the time or hundred percent of the time the wrong choice is the same way. Is that correct or not? We can be led away by our own lusts and our own desires if we're not careful. Because our heart is deceitfully wicked, and who can know it? But if we're going to get the baptism of the if we're going to get the gifts of the Spirit, it's gonna be when we receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and we are honestly seeking God. Because a man who is honestly seeking God is a man who's honestly working on his own heart. Praying, God, reveal to me the desires of my heart and give me the desires of your heart. If there's anything in my life, reveal it to me that I may change it, that I may be transformed to the very image of Jesus Christ. Well, I think a lot of people, and even myself included, it's, it's hard to, I can say, for the pleasures, to, to not live for the pleasures of the world. But the more that pleasure we, for yourself, pleasure for your human body, for your body. But the more that we seek after God, the more those pleasures will dissipate. They will go away because we are seeking after God. Correct. The Bible says that blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Uh, what does Matthew chapter six and verse thirty three state? First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So if we're going to be get the gifts of the Spirit, we need to have the first the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But then we need to seek God with our whole heart. Not part of it. Because if we seek God with only part of our heart, then those gifts of the Spirit that He already has given to us, we might find ourselves as in the first, in the boat in the first Corinthian, as the Corinthian church. Continue. Well, I think that we're doing well. Because when we get down to the end of life, there will also be those that thought that they did well standing before God. Said, have we not done this? And have we not done that? <coughs> well, at some point, their heart was not fully in it. At some point, they were led astray. And they were... And they were deceived. They thought they were doing good. But they didn't do it. And they did, or they didn't do it to the glory of God. They did it for themselves. Anybody have any thoughts, any questions, anything we okay. you'd like to add at this point? Well, you know, some people kind of learn to read the word of God. You know the Spirit. Absolutely, brother. Because there are some, you know, even in some preachers don't even know use the Spirit like they should because the so there are some that say, well, then everybody speak in tongues. But it's just not scary to see the word of God. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. And it's not just um, knowing the spirit, but we've been come blind to all the other spirits as well. If we look at the world around us, especially in America, most, there are plenty that probably think that we're fine and we're not a heathen. I hate to phrase it this way, but we're not a heathen nation or um, satanic um, Satan is at work really strongly in our country, and they're deceived, even though they know that there are satanic video games, um, video, look at all the wicked videos, movies, everything else they're releasing, but yet they don't realize how rampant <coughs> this craft is in America, because their eyes are blind to it. And they're not even 
And, and you were saying about oh, knowing the Spirit. Well, we've been... We're, 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 we're going to it. We don't know what's way in there. Like the 14th chapter, and the 12th chapter, where the 12th chapter tells you the 9th chapter. Absolutely. And the 14th chapter tells you, and Paul himself says that we should not all be responsible for somebody coming. For the sake of time, we'll go ahead and end here and we'll prepare our hearts for service. Gracious Heavenly Father, we give you all praise and glory for everything you've done for us and shall continue to do. Lord, we thank you that you're God who reigns on high, that there's none like you, Lord. Even right now, we rebuke every attack of the enemy that, should, that would try to come our way. We pray that you set your angels at the four corners of the property above and below. And no attack of the enemy may penetrate. I pray that our hearts and our minds will be in one mindset and one accord, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, that the Holy Ghost may move, making himself visible if he's, as much as he chooses. And our song leader and the musicians give them a special blessing as they praise upon the string instruments and the vocal cords. And our song leader as they bring the uh, pastor as he brings forth the word today. Anoint his mind and his lips, Lord, give him a special blessing as well. We pray, Lord, that our hearts and minds would be good soil for your word to fall on that we may remember it throughout the week, but even greater than that, that we would apply it to our lives, Lord. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. How are you doing, Pastor? Not much, yourself? Not bad.